Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Can I hear a living hallelujah? Worthy, worthy is the Lamb of God. The love people of God is always a blessing to be in the presence of the living God. And we thank God for his mercy that has conveyed us to his presence this day. And we trust him that he's going to reach out to us. He's going to bless us in a very special way in the name of Jesus. All our brethren joining us online, the Lord will reach out to you also in a special way. Because wherever we are is holy ground. I welcome every one of us in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We will sing from the English Methodist hymn book, the hymn number eight. We will remain standing to sing the hymn eight. Oh, worship the King.
Please sit and let us pray. Our glorious Father in heaven, we worship you. We've come to adore your holy name, for you are the great I am. You are the King of kings, you are the Lord of lords. You are the Alpha, you are the Omega. You are the creator that was never created. You created the entire world for yourself. You made man in your image for yourself. You gave us dominion over everything you've created. You rule over the affairs of men. You are so mindful of us. We worship you for you are a great God. We worship you for you are a maker, you are a provider, you are a defender, you are all in all. You are a gracious God, a husband to the widow, the father to the fatherless. You are the sustainer of men. You are all in all. Father, accept our praise, accept our adoration, accept our worship this hour in the mighty name of Jesus. Our merciful God, we've gathered again at your feet as sinners. We acknowledge our sins. We've sinned against you many ways. We've sinned in our thoughts, we've sinned in our words, we've sinned in our deeds, we've sinned in our actions and our inactions. But we've gathered to say, Father, we are sorry. We come with a penitent heart to say, we are sorry of all the sins we've committed, the unknown and the known sins. Father, forgive us. By the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, wash us clean. Make us worthy of your presence. Make us worthy to call your name. Make us worthy to pray to you. Make us worthy to be your children. Do this and take all the glory, for we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Our great provider, we thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your faithfulness towards us. You've been so faithful to us, oh Lord, for the past 108 days of this year. You've been with us, oh Lord. And we know that you see us through the remaining 258 days. Lord, thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your care. Thank you for your leading. Thank you for seeing us through all our activities, oh Lord, through these days. Thank you, Lord, for the journey messages you've granted us. Thank you, Lord, for the jobs, for the businesses, for the trades in our hands, for our vocations, our professions. Thank you, Lord, for our finances. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our friends. Thank you for our loved ones. Thank you for Wesley Chopoleki. Thank you for our members. Thank you for our ministers, oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the projects, the numerous projects that you've helped us conclude in this place, oh Lord. We didn't conclude this project. We didn't accomplish it by our own power, neither by our own wisdom or strength. We've seen your mighty hands, oh Lord, through our project. We've seen your mighty hands, oh Lord, in the life of our members. Lord, thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you for sustenance, oh Lord. Thank you for the gift of life once again. You've preserved us, oh Lord. We don't bury our young in this place. We don't die young. You preserve us. We only bury those that are at good old age. Lord, thank you for all the things you've done for us. Thank you, Lord, for our children that have finished their holidays. Some are back in school, oh Lord. Thank you for your hands of protection upon them, oh Lord. Thank you for your coverage, oh Lord. Thank you for building an age of fire around about them and our entire family and household. Thank you, Lord, for the food you provided for us. Thank you for the shelter you gave to us. Thank you, Lord, for the clothes on our body. Thank you for the freedom we enjoy each day. Thank you, Lord, for the birthdays, the dedications, and every reason you've given us to celebrate. Father, we've come to return all our thanks this evening. Accept our thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we invite you to take over our worship this evening. Saturate this arena with your presence, Lord. Take charge of everything we do, O oh Lord. Our readings, our hymns, our prayers, O oh Lord. Let it be in accordance to your plan and purpose for this hour. Lord, for our brothers that are still on their way coming, Lord, hasten their steps to be with us, O oh Lord. Everybody that is connected to this service online or on any platform, the ones that are present here, Lord, let your blessings, O Lord, be with them in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless us, O Lord Jesus, and take all the glory. For we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven, Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen what is, what is the lamb of god please sit right for the bible reading Our Bible reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 5, 17 to 29. The Acts of Apostles, chapter 5, 17 to 29. Then the high priest rose up, and all those who were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees. And they were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But at night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of life. And when they heard that, they entered the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest and those with him came and called the council together with all the leaders of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and did not find them in prison, they returned and reported, saying, Indeed, we found the prison shut securely, we found the prison shut securely and the guards standing outside before the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the high priest, the captain of the temple, and the chief priest heard these things, they wondered what the outcome will be. So one came and told them, saying, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain went with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should be stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not strictly command you not to teach in his name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. And this is the word of the Lord. Beloved, as we get ready to receive the word of God, we shall sing the hymn 821. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus. The hymn 821. We we'll rise to sing.
Lord, we thank you for the privilege you have blessed us with to be in your presence once again. We ask, O oh Lord, that as we hear from you, you will speak to our hearts. Lord, you will reveal your truth to us. You bless us with your strength to live by your word. We ask that through your word today, everything that needs to go from our lives, that we may live the life you have prepared for us. Cause them to go in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can I hear a living amen? amen. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. We thank God for bringing us together again under his banner for to hear him speak to us. The word of God is life. The word of God brings deliverance. The word of God brings salvation. Deliverance from the power of the sin and its consequences and all forms of dangers. That is what the word of God does. And so every time we have the privilege to sit to hear his word, we should be glad indeed. Tonight will not be an exception. The Lord is going to reach out to us through his word and we shall be blessed again in Jesus' name. The sub team for today is a worthy response. By the grace of God, we have been following, especially as people of God in Methodist Church Nigeria, the central team Arise and Build. That has been the central team for Methodist Church Nigeria for the year 2024. And today we look at the sub team, a worthy response. My test shall be found in the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 29. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. A very powerful affirmative statement, a statement that was you know, clear, direct, unequivocal. It was a statement that was not dotted with, you know, confusion. It told them boldly, Peter and the other apostles, looking at the men and women, the high priests and all who had come with all their qualifications and positions, they told them clearly in few words, we ought to obey God rather than men. And so we look at the sub team, a worthy response. As we journey in life, both as believers and as men who are temporal, people who one day will live this life as physical human beings, as we journey, the truth is that life creates events, life creates issues and circumstances that we must give response to. So long you have been born on earth, as you journey as a believer or as one who is a human being or as a husband or as a father, in whatever capacity you have come to find yourself, life has a way of creating scenario that you need to respond to. And that is the truth. A 40 Weak, insufficient response will lead to disaster. So the quality of our responses to the issues that life brings to us and our ways will determine our destiny outcome. How we respond. So where we are today and where we'll continue to be is directly proportional to how we have responded to the event that have happened in our lives. If you trace back, you will, if you want to tell yourself the truth, if you trace back, you will discover that if you had not responded to an event the way you did, you may not have been where you are today. So the kind of response you give to what life brings, you know, is very, very consequential. I tell you a story, I've said this story before. A young man went to a native doctor, because he believes that the native doctor has the power to tell him about his future. 
And as he met with the native doctor and brought forth his request to say, I want to know how my life will play out. The native doctor said, fine. I'm going to take a snail. I will place the snail on the floor. If the snail goes to the left, your life is scattered. But if it, go, if it goes to the right, super. It means your life will be great. And the native doctor placed the snail on the floor. And the snail began to move towards the left. And the young man quickly picked the snail and positioned it on the right-hand side. And the snail began to move towards that direction. And the native doctor said, you have succeededly altered the outcome of your life. It was the response of that man, of that young man, to the prevailing situation that brought the change. So it is important how the kind of response that we give to the things that happen. Now, what happened in the passage we read? They were responses to events. You know, verse 7 was a response to what happened in the preceding verses. God was moving mightily in the midst of the apostles. The high priest and others, they were not happy. They descended on them to threaten them, you know, to to ensure that they, they took life out of what God has begun. And the Bible said, they put them in prison. But guess what? The work of God cannot be stopped. It is impossible. When God is involved and interested in a matter, no matter the delay and opposition, what God has ordained will come to be. As a matter of fact, the opposition will become a climbing step. It will become a ladder to expedite action of fulfilling the plan and purposes of God in the life of that person. So they imprisoned them, but an angel of the Lord came and undone what they did. And thank God for the life of the disciples. They did not discourage. They were not. They took up and they began to preach again. And people went and said, do you know the people you have put in prison? They are preaching. They became more angry. And they went to them, took them, and brought them to the council. The Bible said they asked them, did we not warn you before? Did we? That was a statement of threat to make them adjust what they wanted to say. But I thank God for the spirit of God in the life of the apostles. They were not threatened, and they gave that response. Beloved, there is no force on earth that can stop what God has ordained in your life. There is no power that can bring to naughtiness the statements and utterances of God for your life that are positive. There is no power. It does not mean there will be no attempt to distract, to delay. But the Bible said the counsel of the Lord shall stand. There will be oppositions, but it will stand. So when you take a close look at yourself and you do not understand what is playing out, the truth is that come back to God and rely on his ability and you will find that God will deliver you as a package to that destiny path that he has created for you. It doesn't matter the failure you have encountered. It doesn't matter the delay you have encountered. If the word of God concerning you has gone forth, the Bible says his word will not return empty. It will accomplish of necessity the purpose for which it has gone. And so if the word of God has gone forth concerning you, it must come to pass. And guess what? The Bible said, I know the thoughts I have towards you. They are thoughts of good. They are thoughts to give you your expected end. So there is nothing like, do you think that what God is thinking about me is good? The scripture is clear. The thoughts and plans of God concerning you, they are good. And if it is so, no man can stop it. Hallelujah. They tried to stop the work of God in the life of the apostles, but God intervened and frustrated the counsel and intentions of the enemy. A worthy response. What is a worthy response? A worthy response in the context of what we are looking at has to do with the response you give or the response that is forged or bettered from experience. The response that is bettered from revelation. The response that is bettered from conviction. 
So the answer, response, the reply that we describe as a worthy reply is the reply that is coming from the place of experience. Somebody once said that the lowest ranking officer in the Israeli, in the IDF, Israel Defense Force, in terms of experience, when it comes to dealing with terrorism, that you will be surprised that is greater than a major general in the Nigerian army. Because of their level of exposure, every day they are constantly exposed to the acts of terrorism. And so they have developed and trained themselves and experience. So when you give a reply from the place of experience and exposure, such a reply is usually logical and solid. What is the lamb? So when things happen in your life and you want to respond, if you are responding from the place of ignorance, responding from the place of inexperience, you will find that that response will be ineffective. It will not truly deal with the situation. But when you see, and that is why you see, you know, in the Nigerian universities, a faculty does, cannot stand without a professor. Of necessity, a professor should be there. Because you may see them talk very gentle. They talk like people without strength. But the wealth of experience, academic experience, is better than a 10, 100, perhaps 1,000 master's degree holders. Because where a professor is, anything is possible. They create. They are an authority in what they are saying. And so experience is powerful. When you want to respond and you don't know what to do, one way, go to men and women with experience. You are facing challenges in your marriage. That is a question. Your marriage is asking you a question. Your marriage is bringing forth a situation. And you have not had the experience. What do you do? Go to the sources of experience. Somebody say, I've been married for 60 years, and I thank God I have not had problem with my wife. It means that when they talk about, where marriage, where marriage seminars are organized to speak to people with problems in marriage, you are not qualified to talk because you are not speaking from any experience. You are not speaking from experience. They said there's a popular saying in the north. If you come to sell a medicine for somebody, the person will ask you, have you yourself, have you used this medicine? Did it work? You know, things like that. So you cannot be speaking from a point of ignorance. Experience. Do you have a problem? Look for people whom, by the mercy of God, through age and encounter and exposure, they have gone through it. They will be able to guide you. What is the lamb? I told us a story at one time. A young man wanted to test the strength of the wisdom of an old man. He came to the old man with a bed in his hand at the back and was asking the old man, tell me, is the, I'm holding a bed. Is the bed dead or alive? The man, the young man was holding the bed by the throat. If the man says he's alive, he will press it and the bed will die. If he says the bed is dead, he will bring it out alive and say, look at you, the bed is alive. And the old man, after examining the boy for some time, said, the life of that bed is in your hand. And the young man was defeated. What is the lamb? So when, when a reply is coming from the place of experience, that is a worthy response. What is the lamb? Experience can only come through encounter, through exposure. What you have not seen, what you have not experienced, you don't know. Many, I, I told somebody, I said, if you go to Oxford University, bring a professor of English to pronounce Abiola, if we call Abiola, Abiola, that is not the correct way. If I tell him pronounce Oje you will be, you will be, you will marvel what he will say. So. But if that professor is exposed to my name, has heard people pronounce it, you know, experience will come into play. You say, but I don't have the experience. There are people God has blessed us with. And that is why, you, you, if you read the scripture, at one time, when David was old, he wanted to go to war, and the people said, no, you cannot go. You are the light of Israel. 
If anything happens to you, then our defenses are gone. Number two, a worthy experience is the response that comes from the place of revelation. Many a times, you are thinking about something. All of a sudden, as you are sleeping, something drops in your spirit. And when you go by that direction, you will see an answer. When I was the, the president of the student assembly at MTI Shagown, there are times that I'll just be thinking, what do I do over a case? As I sleep, something will just drop in my mind. Usually after, after the morning devotion, the president will usually stand, not every day, but most, mostly to stand to give a kind of very few minutes talk direction to the student for the day. And when I just bring the word, some people will come later to say, how did you get that word? And I will tell them, I was sleeping. The thing just dropped in my spirit. When you respond to your marital crisis, when you respond to your financial crisis from the place of revelation, when you respond to issues that rises from the standpoint of revelation, that is God dropping something in your spirit or by engaging somebody, a word came and that word struck you like an alert. You got it and your spirit is expanded over that word. That is revelation. Revelation is insight. You are brought to know. That is a worthy response. When you respond based on that, it's a worthy response. Response is based on convention. Convention. You know, that was what, that was what happened when Naomi lost the children and she was going back. The daughter-in-law said, look, I will follow you. The woman tried to discourage her but at last, the woman said, I will go wherever you go. Your God, will. it is conviction. That is, you act, what people are saying and what the situation is saying, they are contrary. But you, there is something you are seeing which they are not seeing. That is conviction. That is conviction. They said, nobody prospers in this place. But the Holy Spirit has told you, go. You are convinced. I ask people, what was Abraham thinking when he boldly called his brother Lot and said, look at this land. I give you the privilege. Choose any place. It is like bringing 100 million and bringing 100,000. And you now ask somebody, choose anyone you want to choose. Abraham was convinced because the Lord had spoken to him before that time that anywhere you put your leg, I will bless. Whether the place was blessed or not. So Abraham was moving with that conviction. It was that same conviction that made him sacrifice Isaac. When God brought the test in Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible said he believed that even if Isaac eventually died, God was able to what? It was conviction. He was not mad. He was walking based on conviction. I so you go to a church and after the preaching, very wonderful preaching, you go and give your car. Because of emotions? No. You must allow the Holy Spirit convince you, speak to you. And if that happens, the blessings come. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. There are some issues we face in life that you must give response to. One of the issues is the issue of repeated afflictions. Do you know it's a challenge? repeated afflictions, afflictions of sickness, disease, no things coming up that waste your fund. Afflictions is a question. As a child of God, that affliction that is unending is asking you, is demanding a response from you. He's saying, what do you want to do? You must respond in the place of prayer. Discouragement. You are discouraged. It is a question. You look at your children, you look at your marriage, you look at your life, you look at so many things. Discourage. That is, the strength to continue is no longer there. It's a question. How you reply to that question that is rising in that form will determine how the outcome of your destiny. Disappointment. Spiritual dryness. There are people who truly want to live the life of a Christian. They will tell God, Father, I don't want to commit sin. And they are serious. 
they will fast. But two days after that thing, sin will come. And at a point, they don't know what to do again because, humanly speaking, they are sincere. The, the sincerity is there. But somehow, they are not able. And it has gone over for years. They become tired. Spiritual emptiness and dryness come in. You cannot pray anymore because when you think about it, you are tired. You cannot read the Bible. You are not dry. Do you know that situation is asking you a question? Is waiting for a response. The way you respond to it will determine the outcome of your spiritual life. Marital financial crisis. Prolonged state of joblessness. So many issues. Beloved, the apostles gave a response that was befitting. God will bless you with the strength and wisdom to also give a befitting response in the name of Jesus. What do you do when this questions rises. One, run to God in the place of prayers. Run. Somebody said, when your marriage is in crisis, what do you do? You run to the one who gave you the marriage at the beginning. So, when your work is in problem, your job, what do you do? If it was God that gave you that job, what do you do? You run back to him and say, Lord, this is what is happening. Run to God in prayers and in fasting. What do you do? How do you respond? Trust God to handle your case. You see, it's very easy to say. Trust God to handle your case. Especially, you know, there are times where it will look like this case now is not about trusting God. Just do what you want to do. Beloved, as a believer... At all times, even if it is something you can do without trusting God, trust Him. And that is why somebody said, pray as though everything depends on prayer and walk as though everything depends on walking and yourself. When you pray, make it look, pray as if, even if you walk, nothing will happen. It's just this prayer. And when you are now walking, do it as though, see, prayer does not count here. It's just this walk. You must find a way to blend the two. Seek counsel. God is helping me to learn that because, <laughs> honestly, I don't know how to do that. If you continue to seek counsel, the Bible said in the multitude of counselors, there is victory. If you continue to seek for advice and the Lord directs you, you will find that what you see as a big problem will become what? Something very little. Some people, they, have, they want to marry and they are thinking this marriage thing is a big problem. But if they go to a marriage counselor and they break it down, they will discover that with 200,000, they may be able to marry. But when they sit on their own to look at it, they will feel it's a very big thing. But there is somebody that will sit you down to tell you that, look, go and see the people. Just go and meet your, you know, visit the parents with a bottle of wine. The way they will break it, you will not discover that ah, ah, with 200,000, I can even do this thing. Because they have gone for counseling. What is the lamb? Make necessary adjustments. How do you respond? If you, are in, if you are in a marriage and there is a crisis, for example, it's a question. Your response should be do self-examination. And if you assess yourself and discover that there is need for adjustment, do not be ashamed or be too proud to adjust. Adjust so that there will be a solution. You are in a business and nothing is happening. Why don't you learn a new trade? Maybe there's a need for you to drop that habit. Habit. Always going to a relationship after, you know, it breaks. Ask yourself what is happening. Maybe something is happening. And as you expose yourself to the word of God, to prayers and to counsel, you will discover the Lord will help you. The Lord will help you navigate the path and bring you to revelation that will be a blessing to your life. The apostles gave a response that was clear and direct. Beloved, we need such because to misappropriate or misfire any response to a situation can be devastating. And that is not what God wants for us. Every time we give a worthy response, our life is advanced and God is Praise. Let us pray. Talk to the Lord that the Lord will grant you the grace.
to always respond effectively at all times to the issues and questions that arises in life in various forms and capacities. That the Lord will help you, the Lord will strengthen you, bless you with revelation, bless you with godly counselors. The Lord, the reason why David succeeded was because of godly counselors. Men and women that were committed, talk to the Lord for his mercy. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Please, let's be upstanding as we sing this song together. Oh, yes, he answers prayers. Oh, yes, he answers prayers. The Lord I serve answers prayers. Only Jesus answers prayers. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, he answers prayers. Oh, yes, he answers prayers. The Lord I serve answers prayers. Only Jesus answers prayers. We serve a God that answers prayers with this understanding. Let's begin to thank him for the word that came to us this evening. Let's thank him for the word that is so timely. Let's thank him for his word that came so strongly towards us, to our direction. The word that is spoke towards our situation today. Let's thank him. Let's thank him for this special topic. A worthy response. Let's thank him for bringing this topic our way today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We are going to say, Father, by our response today, beautify our lives from now henceforth as a nation father the response that we make today oh lord let it bring beauty to our nation oh lord give us oh lord the right answers oh lord that will beautify this nation that will turn things around for nigeria lord help us to give the right response in this situation in this particular time lord help us oh lord let our response as a church oh lord beautify our nation let it turn things around for our nation nigeria father let our response in this time, O oh Lord, of economic meltdown, O oh Lord, bring a change, a supernatural turn around to the situation of our nation, Nigeria. Lord, continue, O oh Lord, to turn things around for Nigeria. You started already, Lord. Turn things around for our nation, O oh Lord. We've seen your mighty hands, O oh Lord. Beautify our nation, O oh Lord. We've responded with prayers, O oh Lord. We've responded with prayers. We've responded with prayers, O oh Lord. The church has prayed. Lord, beautify our nation. Turn things around for our economy. Lord, Lord, visit every facet of our economy. Visit every aspect of our economy, O oh Lord. Turn things around, O oh Lord. Visit every agency of the government, O oh Lord. Turn things around. Turn things around. We've responded by prayers. All the churches that have gathered to pray. You said, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, I'll hear from heaven. I'll hear from heaven. I'll heal their land. Father, heal the land of Nigeria. Hear from heaven, O oh Oh Lord, forgive our sins, oh Lord, and heal the land of Nigeria. Your church has responded, oh Lord, with prayers, oh Lord. We did not fold our hands, oh Lord. We responded with prayers. Lord, heal our nation. Restore our nation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we've responded as a church, oh Lord, in prayers, oh Lord, concerning our personal issues, oh Lord. Lord, answer us, oh Lord. Concerning the issues of our life, Lord, answer us, oh Lord. Lord, we've Responded, O oh Lord, with prayers, Lord. Answer us, O oh Lord, in every issues of our life concerning our children, O oh Lord. Beautify us, O oh Lord. Beautify our family. Beautify our children, O oh Lord. We've responded in prayers from the place of prayers, O oh Lord. Beautify our children. Beautify our family, O oh Lord. Beautify, O oh Lord, our businesses in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray and say, Father. Concerning the question in our health, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, arise in your mightiness, O oh Lord, and grant us wisdom to respond aright, to respond from the place of 
revelation so that we can take away this sickness away from us. Father, concerning our sickness, oh Lord, concerning this helmet, concerning this disease, oh Lord, the one that is diagnosed, the one that is undiagnosed, oh Lord, help us, oh Lord, to respond from the place of prayer. Help us to respond from the place of revelation as we take this sickness away from our body. Father, heal us, oh Lord, as we respond from the place of prayer this night. Heal us, oh Lord. Lead us of all our infirmities, oh Lord. Visit all our members, wherever they are lying, oh Lord, in the hospital, oh Lord, at home, where they cannot afford hospital bills, oh Lord. Let your son of righteousness arise, oh Lord, with healing in his wings, oh Lord. And heal all of us. Heal all our sick relatives. Heal all our sick friends, oh Lord. Heal every love of our ones, oh Lord. All our loved ones, oh Lord, that are sick in the body, spirit and soul. Let your healing flow. Let your healing flow. You are the balm of Gilead. Arise, oh Lord, and heal your children. Arise and heal your children. Your children have responded this evening with prayers, oh Lord. Arise and heal your children in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray and say, Father, concerning the question, oh Lord, in our marriages, oh Lord, arise, oh Lord, and grant us the wisdom to respond and right from the place of prayer as you heal our marriages, oh Lord. Heal our marriages. Every marriage, oh Lord, that is connected to Wesley Chapel, oh Lord, they will not see a downtime. Lord, restore our marriages. Heal our marriages, oh Lord. Heal our homes, oh Lord. Heal our marriages. Restore marriages, oh Lord. Let your peace flow in our homes. Let your peace flow in our marriages. Let your love flow in our marriages. Lord, there shall not be crisis. There, oh Lord, there shall not be crisis, oh Lord. Father, Father, we are responding from the place of prayer. We've gotten the revelation of your word. Father, heal our marriages. Heal our marriages in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray and say, Father, concerning the question in the life of our children, O oh Lord, arise in your mightiness, O oh Lord. Grant us the wisdom to respond from the place of prayer. And as we respond from the place of prayer, restore our children, O oh Lord. All the ones that have gone astray, O oh Lord, respond them. All the ones that are under the influence of one kind of addiction or the other, Lord, let your healing flow. Lord, the ones, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, that have gone down the drain, that have lost their senses, O oh Lord, restore them, O oh Lord. The ones that are in one medical condition or the other. Lord, restore our children. Restore our children, oh Lord. Father, in any form of addiction, restore our children. The ones that are depressed, oh Lord, restore our children, wherever they are. The ones that cannot assimilate again in school, oh Lord, restore our children, oh Lord. Grant them wisdom from above. Lord, build an age of fire around about our children. Even as they go back to school, oh Lord, protect them, oh Lord, Jesus Christ. Cover them from any vices of the wicked, oh Lord. Protect them, oh Lord. Cover them from the eyes of the wicked, O oh Lord. Heal them, O oh Lord Jesus Christ. Restore our children, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let's pray and say, Father, concerning the question in our fruitfulness, O oh Lord. Grant us the wisdom, O oh Lord, to respond from the place of prayer. As we respond from the place of prayer this evening, O oh Lord, cause your children to be fruitful, O oh Lord. Let there be opening of wombs, O oh Lord. Let there be opening of wombs this evening. Let there be opening of wombs, O oh Lord. Let everybody under the sound of my voice, O oh Lord, receive healing, O oh Lord. Receive, O oh Lord. Yeah, help, O oh Lord. Help, O oh Lord. Help your children, O oh Lord. Let there be putting of wombs, O oh Lord. Let there be conceptions, O oh Lord. Let there be conceptions, O oh Lord. Remember your children this evening. Remember your children this evening. For we respond from the place of prayer. Respond from the place of prayer, O oh Lord. Remember your children this evening. Grant, O oh Lord Jesus. Grant, O oh Lord, according to their heart desires. The one that has desired set of twists, O oh Lord. Triplets, O oh Lord. Whatever their heart desires, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, respond from heaven, O oh Lord. Respond, O oh Lord, Jesus Christ. Answer us, O oh Lord. As we respond from the place of prayer this evening. O oh Lord, we are responding to that question. The devil is asking, O oh Lord, where is your God? Concerning that situation. Say, Lord, we've come. We've responded from the place of prayer, O oh Lord. Let there, O oh Lord, Jesus Christ, be conceptions in your house, O oh Lord. Let there be opening of wombs, O oh Lord. Say to the Lord, Lord, your children, oh Lord. Just love your children. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let's pray and say, Father, send your angels, oh Lord, the way you sent to Peter. Let them open every prison door. 
concerning our businesses. Every business that has been locked down in prison, oh Lord. Every form of closed door concerning our business, oh Lord. Let there be opening of doors this evening. Let there be opening of doors this hour. Lord, all our businesses, oh Lord, that is under lock and key by the devil, oh Lord. Father, we decree and declare, let there be openings, oh Lord, in our businesses. Let there be openings, oh Lord. Let the doors of opportunity open for us in our businesses. Let the doors of opportunity open for us in our careers. Let the door of opportunities open for us again in our vocation. Let the door of opportunities open for us again, oh Lord, in our profession. Let the doors of opportunity open for us again in our ministries, oh Lord. Visit us, oh Lord. Let your angelic presence descend, oh Lord. Let your angelic presence descend, oh Lord. Let your angels open every short door. Every short door against our careers. Every short door against our businesses. Every short door against our finances. Every short door against our vocations. Every short door against our profession. Every short door against our ministries. Lord, remember us, oh Lord. Let there be opening of doors, oh Lord. Let the doors open, oh Lord. Lord, let the doors open, oh Lord. Let your angels, oh Lord, visit us, oh Lord. May we encounter a visitation from your angels, oh Lord, in the place of business, in our place of career, wherever we are, oh Lord, wherever we are shut down, oh Lord. Let there be opening of doors. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Father, concerning our church, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, we are responding from the place of prayer. Remember your church now, Lord. Lord, rekindle that revival fire. Rekindle that revival fire on all the altars of Methodist Church Nigeria. Using Wesley Chapel Lakey as a pilot church, oh Lord. Let your fire descend on our altar. Let your fire descend afresh on our altar. Let signs and miracles be the order of the day from our altar, oh Lord. Lord Jesus, rekindle that revival fire. Let the fire of old born again from our altars. Let the fire of old born again from our altars, resulting in signs, O oh Lord, resulting in miracles, O oh Lord, resulting in wonders, O oh Lord. Let your wonders, O oh Lord, flow from my altar. Lord, touch the tongue of our ministers with a cold of fire. Let them speak your word with power. Let them pray with power. Answer them when they pray. Answer them when they pray. Hear them when they speak, O oh Lord. Whatever prayer is answered, Pray, O oh Lord, every prayer offered from this altar, let it be answered, O oh Lord. Let it arise to your throne of grace, O oh Lord. Let it arise to the throne of grace, O oh Lord. We declare Wesley Chapel, the altar of Wesley Chapel, the altar of answered prayers. Your presence is here. Let every alteration, O oh Lord, every word we alter to you, every prayer, every petition we bring to your feet, let it be answered, O oh Lord. Father, let your revival fire burn afresh from our altars. Let's begin to pray for ourselves. Whatever you want God to do for you, these remaining days of the month, we don't have many days again for this April. We have a few days to the end of April. Say, God, this is what I want concerning my life. This is what I want concerning the life of my children. This is what I want concerning the life of my loved ones. This is what I want concerning the life of my family. This is what I want concerning my business. This is what I want concerning my career. Whatever you want God to do for you, in your business, in your career, in your life as a whole, tell it to God now. It's a prayer answering God. He never stops any prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Father, your children have come at your feet with their petitions, with their heart desires, with their heart cry. Lord, they have cried to you. They have no way to run to. They have run to the Father of all. Father, answer our prayer speedily in the mighty name of Jesus. Grant all our heart desires in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the remaining days of this month be months of days of testimony for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it be days of testimony in our careers in whatever we set our hands to do in the mighty name of Jesus. No evil eye shall befall us, O Lord. Lord, your goodness will follow us wherever we go. Lord, build an age of fire around about your children. No accident, no untimely death, no weapon of the enemy will come close to this one. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, do this and take all the glory. For we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. What is the Lamb of God? Please have your seat in the presence of God. You are blessed tonight. Celebrate Jesus. Put your hands together to the glory of God. Put your hands together like you mean it. Hallelujah. 
God bless you wonderfully. I believe the Lord has spoken to us and through prayers, the Lord has met us today. Beloved, it's always wonderful to be in God's presence and I thank every one of us for coming here today. The Lord will bless you mightily in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us all please remember our weekly and church activities. By the grace of God, every Sunday by 8 to 8.45, we gather right in the church for the Sunday school. It is always a time of engagement. We look at the word of God and we raise questions and answers are given to the questions. It's always a time of refreshment. Encourage someone and you yourself be around for that wonderful study time. And by nine, the main service would begin and it's always a blessing also. Every Wednesday like this, by 6 p.m., we gather here uh, on site, online for the midweek service, a time of prayer also and of the word. Tonight has not been an exemption. The Lord has blessed us. And every Friday, we meet at the Zoom platform and that program, which is the Bible study, is a circuit-wide program. All the churches gather together. Of course, you can invite your friends. We come together for, to study the Word of God. The program is also transmitted via Facebook and other social handle, me, you know, means of the church. I encourage us to always be part of that program. The Lord, we bless you in Jesus' name. By 6 a.m., on a daily basis, on the Mix L L-L-L app, we gather for to pray. I want to encourage us and, you know, family members, please always wake up to join that praying program. It is a good way to start the day with the Lord. The Lord is doing his miracles and his wonders in that program. Join the program this tomorrow and the Lord will bless you. By the grace of God, tomorrow 4 p.m. we have uh, a program here. Is the service of song of uh, Mama Adewale. 4 p.m. the program we hold. If you have time, you can come around to be part of the program. On Saturday, by 9 a.m., the prayer summit, which is a monthly program, comes up. I want to encourage us again, be here. For all of us that have been coming, you will agree to me that it's a blessing. So come with your family, come with your friends. Let's come to pray. The God of intervention, the God who knows how to do what no man can do, we meet us at the point of our knees in Jesus' name. And by 12 noon, the youth we gather for their program. It's a marriage seminar. They call it Single and Searching. You can come and join the program. All youth are encouraged to be around. The Lord bless you. Thank you very much for joining this evening program in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have always been with us when we gather in your name. But thank you because we know that your presence has been of tremendous blessings to us in this service. We ask, O oh Lord, that the blessing with which you have blessed us shall abide with us at all times in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the privilege to hear from you, the opportunity to lift up our voices to pray and to offer up our sacrifices. Lord, we ask that this act will be accepted as an offering unto you and your blessings be released upon us all in the name of Jesus. And as we prepare to leave this building, we are not leaving your presence. May your presence go with us. May your presence defend us. Even as we lay our head to rest today, may your holy angels, O Lord, who always is on guard, be on guard to defend us all through the night in the name of Jesus. And in your strength, rise us up tomorrow as we go about our daily activity. Thank you, eternal rock of ages, because we know you have heard us. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll all rise to say the grace together in fellowship. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen.